the so-called elites know that God is evil. Let's talk about it. Like I've talked about in many other videos, where we talk about the concept of the demiurge, and also the concept of the femiurge, as well as the concept of the goddess or the god, etc. Or goddess or god without the the before the word. Any variation or concept thereof. The point being is that it's quite obvious that whoever these elites in fact actually are, whether they are the three-letter word folks, predominantly and mostly exclusively, or whether they are the three-letter word folks, as well as all sorts of other different groups involved and in conjunction with them. Whatever the exact case is with this situation, well, the point being is those elites know that God is evil. Uppercase G God, they know God is evil. Now, there is this very interesting thing that... Mr. Corbett brought up from Nonconformist Radio recently in one of his videos where he was talking about how the vagina directly, if stretched out visually, actually looks like a pyramid with an all-seeing eye at the top. And I was like, that's actually a really interesting observation. A very interesting observation, which I am, I am certain Demiurge Killer, Mate, as well as Igor, would deeply appreciate as something that is noteworthy. <laughs> I love it, man. That term, that noteworthy term. When it, I love it when it's mentioned as like a joke in comments and stuff like that. Abstract, I know you're listening, brother. So there you go. This is noteworthy. <laughs> Take note of that. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. So with this being the case... In spite of everything else that may be going on interpersonally among content creators, etc. That's aside from this point in this video. The point being is that that, it's, that point itself is very significant to note. Because it's connected to the Femiurge principle, concept, and idea talked about by Igor and Mate, who runs the channel Demiurge Killer, quite frequently. Um, there is a lot to this Femiurge concept and principle, folks that I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of in my content. Um, because there's so many different aspects to this Femiurge principle that it, it is going to take multiple videos to cover, for sure. Definitely. Uh, and there's actually a huge amount of evidence for the Femiurge being the actual root reality, entity, thing, being, etc. Vastly beyond the Demiurge, or Demiurge's plural, uh, and actually, the being at the root of every aspect of reality, not only this one, okay? So that all-seeing eye, the vagina and the, the vagina being stretched as the triangle and then the clitoris at the top, that's very interesting. And of course, the vesica Pisces shape, right? That half-circle shape also is correlated with the vagina, the yoni, the yonim, right? So, for those of you who may not know, I'll explain a little bit more about this Femiurge principle, concept, idea, etc. So you can kind of get a general idea of where we're going with this. So, first thing people need to understand right off the bat is this has nothing to do with misogyny at all. This isn't anything to do with like a sexist narrative or a men versus women. This is not what, what this is. Um, and it's, it's very abundantly clear to me that that's not what this is in so many ways, but I feel that's important to specify uh, for many different reasons. But in essence, this, this viewpoint or the perspective of at the root of reality, there is this feminine entity, okay? Or you could say the warped, worst version of what femininity could be in its worst possible form being at the root of reality. And the thing that, in fact, is actually tormenting both women and men in this world and beyond it. 
But what's interesting, what's horrifying, actually, not interesting, is that this femiurgic entity is, is tormenting women physically with the birth process and with the menstruation cycles monthly, right? Even more so than men are being tormented in those particular ways. And women are also being tormented with this urge quite often to give birth to children, right? As are men. But what's really, really, really fucking interesting about this is that um, the principle that even the penis directly is basically a variation of the clitoris, an extension of the clitoris, and that the clitoris itself is in fact a variation of the penis. And then of course you have the chromosomes, the XX and then the XY connected with the triple X theme, etc. And then you have reality permeated by this continual urge and push for new forms to be brought into sentience here, right? It just permeates the psychologies of most entities here. This is coming from, according to this hypothesis, this femiurgic being who is pushing all of these things, right? Now, this entity is also a sexually obsessed entity, okay? Both asexual as well as sexual, both, okay? Engorged in its sexuality with itself directly as well as sexuality with its various aspects and parts and mutations that branch off of it. So this obsession with its own pleasure and experience thereof, combined with its addiction to sacrifices being made to it and torment of sentiences being experienced and observed by it in various different variations, novel torments, randomized arbitrary torments quite often, torments that specifically are designed to be extremely unfair and bizarre, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So there's this movie coming out, or that is out, that is called Evil Dead Rise. And it shows this female mother character that very interestingly illustrates quite well the theme of this femiurgic being, right? the root theme of this femiurge thing that is hypothesized to be the root of reality by Igor, Mate, etc. Now, we know that the core root reality is this vile thing of some form or variation. We know that the thing is vile to the maximum. But what we also know is that pleasure itself, as we've discussed in many other videos, the pleasure goddess, how I describe her, but if you have an issue with describing her as a goddess, just pleasure directly then. Point being is that pleasure directly is a mutation from torture. And there's two key things going on with pleasure, okay? Pleasure is clearly set up and designed as a novel setup for future torture, a novel mechanism to create and ensure the vast extreme unfairness between two sentiences, thus adding to the torment and torture in very novel, horrific, arbitrary ways, akin to a very dark game, okay? But that is exactly where the loophole lies, because this entity at the root of reality is obsessed with its own pleasure, okay? So that right there is the loophole. And I found firsthand, actually, that having within my thought process and consciousness awareness of this entity, okay? Or if you don't take this stuff as literal, just go with the premise of awareness of the concept or theme of this archetype of an entity, right? For you non-theists out there or anti-theists or whatever. So either take you can take this either literally or figuratively symbolically, but you'll you'll notice very similar results that I've experienced, or I suspect you will notice similar results. 
what I've noticed is that having a consciousness and a perspective towards this entity of desiring for it to experience perpetual pleasure, specifically sexual types of pleasure with myself, okay, and from myself, has led to huge amounts of exactly that in my life. More specifically, my desire to protect and pleasure the pleasure goddess herself, pleasure herself directly, or pleasure itself, pleasure himself, however you want to see that. Point is, pleasure directly. Seeing pleasure as a being, for me personally, I experience the pleasure goddess as an actual, literal, real being. And if you're a non-theist, you could see it this way. You could see it from the perspective of, I consider pleasure to be a being, therefore my experience of pleasure is drastically different from the experience of pleasure most people have for this reason, right? Um, and the point being here is that whether you're a theist or non-theist, these same principles can be applied and you'll get similar results. So honing in on pleasuring the pleasure goddess as well as the root sentience that you could call the Femiurge, right? Symbolized by this triangular vaginal symbol with the clitoris at the top and the vesica Pisces shape in the middle, right? The all-seeing eye. The results are that my life is majorly freed from the vast majority of torments that almost every other being faces here in this state drastically minimized in like every respect. Okay. On top of that, I get huge amounts of help from others and kindness and affection from others that is genuinely showered towards me. And others are inclined to focus on the positives in me versus not. So what's interesting about this dynamic is that there's real world results to the psychology that I've had towards this entity and towards these concepts, whereas I've noticed a pattern. Others who have expressed malice or hatred or frustration or the desire to torment back this entity at the root of reality, or rather have an emotional set, even if they're non-theists, so, well, if there is a god or a goddess, I just, I want them to face what they've inflicted on us. Ugh. I want to get back at them. These individuals who have the psychology themselves face far more torment situationally in life, especially far more mental and emotional torment on a consistent basis. Indirect connection to that. So I thought about this long and hard. Pun very much intended. And I was like, okay. So we're dealing with an entity that has a deep, dark, sadistic sense of humor, an entity that gets pleasure from torturing others and torturing sentience, but an entity that is also obsessed with her own pleasure to an insanely crazed degree, right? So if this entity is aware of what I'm actually thinking and feeling towards her, if this entity is aware that I'm contemplating, well, here is a loophole in this setup that is reality. She's aware of all these things all at the same time. And if she's also aware of my obsession with pleasure and the pleasure goddess, etc. Well, there's a unique dynamic going on. In other words, what, what she's, she's appreciating the fact that I want only pleasure for her directly. Okay. As a genuine desire. And at the same time, she's also appreciating the fact that I only want pleasure for the pleasure goddess and my desire to protect her because she is, in fact, who? What? Well, she is the pleasure directly of the Femiurge, right? So it's advantageous to her to ensure that I don't get tormented or tortured under and within her otherwise completely torturous hellscape that is the rest of reality. Because I'm aware of what she's doing. I'm aware of why 
I'm aware of the basis. And in spite of all that, my desire is still only for her to be pleasured. So what's happening is my psychology is aligned with the pleasure goddess who is immune to the torments and tortures of the femiurge and who is an entity who is incapable of experiencing anything other than pleasure herself, obviously. And so that for me has created a containment bubble, a safety protective bubble of my own situation, sentience and experiences that ensure my own perpetuation of pleasure. Right. Because I don't see it from the perspective that this entity, if in fact this entity is omnimalevolent or close to it and is highly likely vividly aware of everything that's going on all at the same time, right? In this freakazoid, hyper, creepy, you know, all-seeing eye type of a dynamic. Well, there's nothing able to be hidden from such an entity, obviously. So obviously my psychology isn't, well, I'm just going to try to sneakily get a one up on her by ha ha ha, chuckle, 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 uh, engaging in this loophole. Well, no, she knows exactly what I'm doing and exactly why I'm doing it. And she's obviously finding amusement out of it. So it's like, it's this combination of me acknowledging that she's finding amusement and knowing that she's aware of what I'm doing and thanking her for at least not torturing me directly, right? When she otherwise easily could or would be, okay? So the reason I'm bringing all of this up is that these elites, whoever they actually are, in fact, the three-letter worders or the others who are engaging in variations of worship of this entity at the root of reality. What they're all doing, what they all have in common, is they're individually making some variation of a deal with this entity at the root of reality to relatively keep themselves free of torture directly and to ensure that they themselves gain huge amounts of benefit in life, physically, monetarily, fame-wise, achievement-wise, etc. Praise of others towards them-wise, etc. You get the idea, right? So basically anyone at any time can do this. Um, but what what's going on within the conspiracy fold, especially of narratives, discussions, views within the soul trap fold. A lot of these narratives and concepts and ideas that are floating around, what's happening amongst a lot of individuals that adhere to these ideas and concepts is they're totally refusing to make any kind of deal with this entity at all. Thinking that there's some way they can genuinely get a one up on this entity or some way that they can genuinely screw it over and trap it or defeat it or whatever. Um, whereas it's quite obvious to me, the only way this entity is actually even potentially containable is by immersing it in huge amounts of pleasure continually as the containment. Okay. And ensuring that it's able to gain pleasure from Sources that are not torturous in nature. So. It's quite obvious to me that the mechanism to please this entity in ways that are non-torturous is to hone in completely on exactly that in your psychology, in your consciousness. Okay. Because obviously this entity is also pleasured by 
ourselves being addicted to pleasure and it's seeing us addicted to pleasure. This is also a mechanism that it's pleasured by. So it's not, it's not only pleasured by torture directly, even though it is also pleasured by that. Because if that was the case, then nothing ever would occur that was other than only torture. That being the main point to take note of. Okay. And many would say, Mate has suggested this before, Demiurge Killer, and Igor has suggested similar things, that there's a high likelihood, high potential of my situation just being a setup for me to face horrific tortures after the fact, right? Just a big game being played to convince me that I found a loophole to only screw me over in just horrific ways to where I'm tortured to death in far worse ways than anyone ever has before, right? But here's the point. Even if that's the case, even if that is what the goal or agenda is, etc., well, the result is now, currently, here and now, I'm experiencing the perpetuation of pleasure and I'm having my desires fulfilled to extreme degrees. Currently. Regardless of what will happen after this state, right? So that is very noteworthy. <laughs> uh. So... I've come to this conclusion and understanding after going through all these different types of psychologies and perspectives and views towards the world, towards life, etc. I've run the gamut of them. All these different narratives of, you know, when I get beyond this state, I'm going to kick ass and be this, you know, entity that totally just saves everyone everywhere at all space and time and past, present, future. I just alter reality myself directly. Rah! That whole narrative. I had that for many years, actually, that perspective. And I, it's interesting seeing a lot of other content creators and people online talk about and basically have that perspective themselves also. Perspective I used to have a handful of years back, right? Whereas as the years have gone on, my perspective has shifted far more to a, a far more darker, a dark wave perspective, right? I'm going to do a video on that coming up soon. How this type of content, I officially call it dark wave content, right? So topics pertaining to deep, dark, gritty reality and how to go about interacting with it and engaging therein while maintaining a stance of benevolence and positivity and upliftment amid recognition of the total horror that it is. I classify this officially as dark wave content. So I'd like it to be its own new genre of content where you have the perfect symbiosis of vivid awareness that all aspects of reality are dark and evil and horrifying in their own unique ways. While at the same time, in spite of that, you yourself continue promoting pleasurism and affection and love in spite of understanding that reality is a continual eternal forever horror, right? Dark wave. That's what this type of content is called. So I hope you like the term and I hope you will use it in your hashtags and in your uh, tags below your videos going forward. It's a very cool sounding term and that's exactly the intention. It's dark and cool at the same time. Dark wave. The wave refers to the surges of inspiration you get in spite of the darkness of the content, right? That's the wave part. And of course, the darkness part has to do with going super deep in, into your own psyche psychology and super deep into awareness of what is actually reality distinguished from what you would prefer reality to be or want it to be, right? So I encourage all of you to deeply ponder and consider what I'm talking about here. So hopefully you can help 
have a much deeper understanding of what exactly the elites know and are doing and why, and exactly how they're effectively controlling the world. Because think about it. If you can convince the majority of the world that there's an objectively good benevolent being watching over other sentiences and get them to actually believe that, well, think about it. That makes the joke that much more sadistic and that much more dark when they realize and find out that at the root of reality is this horrifically abominably vile thing that never had a slight ounce of goodness in it other than its addiction to pleasure, which is the glitch, the mutation, the loophole, right? So I would compare it to this. My perpetuation of pleasure and yours, I would compare it to a glitch in a video game or a glitch in an otherwise horrifying nightmare hellscape where if you were to like compare it to something on a screen, it would basically be you're playing like the worst, most horrific horror game imaginable, but there's like one scene where you're looking at an incredibly voluptuous divine beauty and she's approaching you and making love to you, even though the plot and the intention of her use is to screw you over afterwards. for her to unexpectedly shift into this horrifying form all of a sudden and devour you much to your horror and surprise. It's basically in essence, you ensuring that that moment remains on glitch mode where it stays on repeat. So the part that comes after where she turns into this horrifying thing to devour you never actually kicks in where you just keep on repeat eternally forever that sacred delusion that you have this loving romantic dynamic going on and you hone in on that and keep that glitch going so the game doesn't keep playing after the fact. You see? Intriguing concept, isn't it? Something that was designed to torture you after the fact you can use to ensure you never get tortured perpetually as long as you maintain the loophole in a continual feedback loop into and onto itself, herself, himself, etc. right? So the entity that was intended to be used as a, a mask of the horror that is in reality beyond, behind her it, etc., is in fact the entity you hone in on and don't let go of and do not allow to be used in any other ways or to be converted over to any other function. So there you have it, folks. That is how I go about my life. That is how I see reality. And that is what I'm doing in terms of how I'm engaging with reality. I'm maintaining the pleasurable glitch on feedback loop and my goal is to maintain that forever. Being vividly aware that the rest of reality is nothing but a nightmare hellscape. It's an intentional maintenance of the glitch, an intentional maintenance of the delusion, an intentional maintenance of the benevolence within an ocean of horror. And with that, I hope you sleep well and have an absolutely wonderful night. And I... We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.